Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Neller and I'm here to go over the project that we'll be doing for Chapter 7 in Business Math. Um, I just called it the Insurance and Investment Project. And here you're going to have a fictional couple that's trying to make some informed decisions about life insurance, retirement funds, and investing some of their extra money. So we just have Ramon and Alicia. They're just a made-up couple. I got their names off of a worksheet. Uh, we'll say Ramon is 25 years old. Um, he graduated from college three years ago, and he's working as an accountant, currently making $64,000 per year. And again, I just Googled that that's kind of an average amount of money for an accountant. Um, he's been married to Alicia for a year, and she's a math teacher at a local high school, and currently she earns $51,000 per year. And again, I just Googled that amount um, for an average salary for teachers. Um, so we're going to help them make some decisions. So we're going to use uh, the internet. There's lots of cool tools and calculators out there um, to find some information if you're trying to make these situations or these decisions for your life. So Ramona and Alicia are going to um, get some life insurance. So we're going to go to State Farm. And again, I picked State Farm just because it was one of the only sites for insurance that I could find that didn't um, have you actually contacted by an actual accountant, okay, or, or an agent. So I don't want you to go somewhere and have to put in your name and your address and your phone number and email and then get lots of spam calls from um, insurance agents trying to sign you up for life insurance. So we'll just use State Farm. And then we're also going to help them um, invest some money for the retirement. So we're going to use an IRA calculator. So we're going to go to bankrate.com and they have a really cool calculator there with some sliders where you can change all the different information um, and see how much you should invest and how much you can end up saving after a certain amount of time. And then they also want to invest some money in stocks and bonds, mutual funds, Maybe they want to invest in like a CD through a bank. So there's lots of different ways that we've talked about in the chapter about how you can invest money to have some extra income. So we're going to go to calculator.net and take a look at their investment calculator. This doesn't um, give you specific information about investing in a specific stock or bond and it doesn't show you how to actually do that. It just kind of shows you if you were to invest in that way, here's how much money you could possibly earn for a certain amount of time. Okay. So these are all just made up scenarios and these are just cool websites where we can go and we can um, play around with the parameters a little bit and kind of see um, how much money you could make or not make. And I give you the restrictions on their ages and their salaries just so that you have a limit um, on how much these fictional people can do. We don't want them investing $50,000 a year when they only make $64,000 per year because we're assuming they still would have mortgage, um, car payments, they still have to get groceries and get gas in their vehicles, buy clothes, so they need money for that stuff. Um, there's nothing in here about them having children, but you can see that when we go to these different sites, you can play around with the different features, so you can experiment a little bit more as well, okay? And also, I've created a situation where there's one male and one female, just because for some of these um, sites, it does depend if you're male or female, especially for insurance. I think that's maybe a little old fashioned, but that's how the rates are set up. So if you want to um, set up a scenario where you have two men that are being insured or two women that are being insured, that is totally fine. Um, you can do that by all means. But for here, for this worksheet, we're just going to use one man and one woman so we can see the different effects that it has on the pricing, okay? So we're gonna go to statefarm.com and there you can see Jake from State Farm. And from the product menu, we're going to pick life because we're shopping for life insurance. And we'll assume that we're in Illinois, okay? Um, we'll keep Alicia and Ramon in Illinois, just like us. And then you can click on start a quote. And don't worry, this won't have you getting contacted by an agent, I promise, okay? 
Um, and here it says, are you seeking term life insurance? And we're gonna click yes. We've talked about how in the book, whole life insurance is maybe a little bit better because it's like a, an investment. It's an account that you can draw the money out of, but State Farm doesn't let you um, get information about a whole life insurance policy unless you contact an agent. So we'll just say, yes, they're gonna get term life insurance. Now, I made up a birth date for Ramon. So I have some information here about him. Um, his birthday is January 2nd, 1996. Okay, just a made up date. And um, I just had to do 1996 because that's 25 years ago when I'm recording this, it's 2021. Uh, we're also gonna assume that he's a non-smoker. He's six feet tall and he weighs 190 pounds and he's in excellent health and he would like $250,000 of coverage for 30 years. Now, once we enter that information, we'll be able to select the disability insurance and we'll be able to add Alicia. So I have more information in part C about Alicia. So we'll get to that in a moment, but let's enter the information for Ramon, okay? So his made up birth date is January 2nd. So we'll do 01, 02, 1996. And he is a male. Uh, no, he doesn't use tobacco. That's a bad habit. Don't do that. Uh, he was six feet tall, and we have to put in zero inches. And I said he weighed 190 pounds. Again, I just Googled average weight for average height. So this is by no means some, some standard that I have. These are not expectations that I have for anyone's height or weight. Um, but we're going to say he's in excellent health just because that's going to get us the lowest rates. If you have fair health or average or good, your rates are going to go up, which again, may not be fair. Um, we're for his coverage amount, we're going to select the $250,000. Again, you can play around with this. And when we get to the other slide with the quote, you'll be able to change it after we've put in some information. And we're gonna select 30 years, um, just because we're assuming he wants to live for 30 years. If you shorten the time, um, that'll just give you a different rate. But some people select shorter terms because after 10 years, maybe things have changed in his life and he would like to change his policy. So then he can just start a new life insurance policy after that time limit is up. So here's his made up information. So we'll click continue. And then on this page, you gotta kind of scroll up a little bit and it says, would you like to add a premium for disability? And we talked about how in the book, that is a good option. If you have the ability to do that, it's $2.83 more per month. So that seems fair. So we'll select yes. And then here in this little drop down, we're gonna add coverage for his spouse. So again, we're just selecting a male and a female just so we can see the different rates. And for Alicia, I made up her birth date to be February 3rd, 1996. She's five feet, eight inches tall, and she weighs 160 pounds. She's a non-smoker in excellent health, and we're gonna do the same coverage, the 250,000 for 30 years, okay? So again, this is just made up information here. Um, let's see, that birth date, that is not Alicia's, that's Ramon's made up birth date. So we'll say hers was February, what did I say? February 3rd, 1996. And she's five feet, eight inches tall. So she's pretty tall. Um, oops, we'll say 160. Again, I just Googled average height and weight. So this is by no means some expectation that everybody must fit this body size. I know that's not realistic. Um, but no, she has not used tobacco. That's, that's something I will say is, is bad. Don't do that. And she's in excellent health and we're going to select the same coverage. So 250,000 for 30 years, and then we will add adult. And then again, you got to kind of scroll up a little bit. So now you can see that we've added the disability, we've added the other person. We're not going to add children, but you could certainly play around with that feature if you'd like. If you want to pretend that Ramon and Alicia have some children, by all means, go right ahead. And then we'll click on get a quote. And don't worry, this isn't going to have an agent contacting you, okay? But this is where you can see how much they would pay per month or annually. 
So $512.50 a year. Okay. And then over on the side, you can change the term length. So maybe they only want to do 10 years. Okay, so that changes the price. Um, maybe they want more coverage. You could go up in different amounts and you can see how that affects the annual rate. Or you could go down in different amounts. Um, you could remove the different um, add-ons that we had, the disability or the extra adult. So you could play around with those features, okay? But we have an annual payment for the 30 years for the 250000 for each of them. Okay? So then on the worksheet here, it says how much will they have to pay annually? So you can find that piece of information off the website. And then what is the breakdown per policy? Okay, so here's the annual amount. And then the breakdown, by that I just mean, this is how much Ramon would cost. He would cost the insurance company $275. His disability would be $32.50. And then Alicia's coverage is $205. So that's why it's interesting to do one male and one female, because a woman is $70 cheaper. Why is that? Um, we don't know. We don't know if that means women don't take as many risks as men, so they're like safer for insurance companies to insure. I think that's probably the best answer, um, but it also seems a little unfair. Okay, so you can play around with the different features in there, but um, you can here answer those questions if you want to write this on the worksheet that's printed out, or if you just want to write it on a piece of paper, that's fine, but you do need to answer those questions. Okay. And then I do have a little reminder here not to click on this part right here, this send a quote to an agent. Do not click on that, okay? Because that will um, send your fake information to an agent and then you might get phone calls or emails, okay? Probably when it says send quote to an agent, you would have to enter your phone and your email, but don't do that, okay? So don't click there. I don't want you to get a bunch of spam, okay? That's not the point of the project. We're just getting information. We're just getting numbers and we're just being curious. Okay. So the next part um, is where they're going to save some of their money for retirement into a Roth IRA. So we're going to go to bankrate.com and you're going to click on the little three bars here and we're going to go to retirement. And then if you scroll down, there's a Roth IRA calculator. And when you click on that, scroll down a little bit, and you can see that they give you this cool little um, menu here where you can change the starting balance, change your contributions, your age, et cetera, okay? So here, um, we're going to enter their current age as 25. We're gonna say they wanna retire at 65. They want an 8% return. And we can leave the marginal tax rate set at 25%. That's okay. I'm not even sure what that means. Um, it's probably different per state or if it's federal or whatnot. Um, and then they're going to maximize their contributions every year. And then we'll click calculate. Okay. So um, let's set their age. And you can either type the number or you can move the little slider to 25. Their retirement age is 60. Uh, or 65. Let's move the expected rate of return up to 8%. We'll leave the 25% and then check the little box here to maximize their contributions. You can see that the maximum contribution then goes up to 550 or $5,500. Okay. Now, once I click that, down below, the table adjusts automatically. You might need to click the little calculate button, or if you're typing the numbers into the box, you can hit enter, and then it will do the calculations for you. But you can see that they will have $1,568,120 in their Roth IRA by the time they retire. Okay? So that's, that's probably pretty good if you've got a million dollars, million and a half saved up, okay? So then there are some questions in here. Um, how much money will they re have at retirement if they start with zero dollars? So that's the way we had it set now. If they start with $5,000 or a $10,000 investment. So right here, the starting balance, we had it set at zero. 
you can change it to 5,000 and see what happens. There you can see their total went to 1,667,000 or if we do 10, then it goes to 1.7, okay? And then it says, what if they wait another five years to start their savings? What does that do to their final amount? So if we take this little slider and we move it up to age 30, oh, you can see down below their Roth IRA went down now. It was at 1.7, now it's at 1.2 million. Okay, I wouldn't turn down 1.2 million, but it is less than 1.7, okay? Um, and then it says, what if they retire at age 70? So we'll go to that little slider and we can move that up or you can type in the box. You can see the chart move as you move the sliders. You can see the chart move down below. So I think that's kind of cool too. Maybe that's why I like this website. But if they retire later, oh, now their Roth IRA, IRA went up again. Now it's at 1.8 million. So that makes sense. The longer you're waiting to take money out of the account, the more time it has to acquire interest and earn money for you. And then here it says, what do you think is the best option for Alicia and Ramon? So this is where I just want you to play around with this a little bit. Okay, let's say they're 25 now. Um, we'll move that slider down to 25. We'll move their retirement age up to 70. We'll keep everything out. We'll say they have a starting balance of 10,000. Okay, um, then they're gonna have $2 million, 2.6 million. Oh my goodness. But again, if you are playing around with this, don't make their starting balance $50,000 because that could be a whole year's salary, okay? If you do that, it's kind of fun to see down below. They're going to end up with almost $4 million in their account. So that would be crazy cool, but they might not be able to financially do that. So that's why I gave you those restrictions about how much money they earn per year, okay? So you can play around with that and you can come up with whatever you think the best scenario for them would be. Okay, but just kind of keep it realistic. Don't tell me that they should invest a million dollars and end up with a billion or something like that, okay? And then the last part we're gonna do is um, calculator.net. Okay? Now this is just a cool website because it's got all kinds of calculators here. It's even got math calculators. So if for some reason you're looking for a cool calculator, um, they're all here. They even have like body mass index, they have all kinds of stuff. Um, but we're going to use the investment calculator. So in this financial calculator column where it says investment calculator, we're going to click on that. Okay. Now this is just for a generic type of investment. So we're not going to get into specifics about how to get stocks or bonds or which one is better or should you get a mutual fund or a CD. We're not going to get that specific here. We're just going to say if they did one of these types and if they could start with $1,000 to invest and if they could just leave it in the stock market or leave it in their account for about 40 years, if they got about an 8% return, that's what we were using on the IRA, so we'll just keep the percents the same, um, what would happen? And what if they contributed money each month? Now, ideally, that's what you should do. You should find some kind of account where you can put a little bit of money in each month or each year. Um, monthly deposits actually earn you more interest because on a lot of these accounts, the interest is... Uh, calculated monthly. So if you can invest monthly, then you will have more interest that gets added to your funds. So every time it calculates, then you get more money. So we'll play around with that as well. But these are going to be our beginning parameters for Alicia and Ramon here. Okay. So on this first little tab here, it says end amount, but down here, it lets you enter a starting amount. So we're going to say that they're going to just invest $1,000. Okay, they've got $1,000 extra money, and they want to leave this in here for a while. So they're going to be working until about age 65. So if they're 25 up to 65, that's 40 years. Okay, and we'll change the rate from 6% to 8%. And their additional contributions, we just wanted $100 each month. And then you can click Calculate. And I like this site too because it's got this cool bar or line graph and then the pie chart down at the bottom as well. So that's cool to look at too. 
And you can see that after 40 years, they'll have, it says over here on, on the right side, kind of in the middle of the screen, $334,000. And that's just extra money, okay? Um, but then it does have the breakdown. They only have to put $48,000 total into this account over 40 years. And this is how much interest they get. $294,000 in interest. Wow, that is how you make your money work for you, okay? So if you're young and you have money to invest, this is a cool way to earn a lot of money for your future, okay? And then I give you um, some questions here. So I did say, what's the breakdown of how much money they contribute and how much they earn in interest? But then I say, what if they invest $10,000 to start with? Okay, well, let's go change that number. Let's add another zero. Boom, now they're over at a half a million, 539,000, okay? Well, what if they contribute more each year or each month? What if they do $1,000 each year? What if monthly is too much for them, but they can do $1,000 every year? Ooh, now it went down a little bit because like I said, contributing monthly is better than contributing once per year, okay? So let's change it then one more time. Let's change it to what if they pay $250 per month instead of doing $100 a month? What if it's $250 per month? Calculate. Oh, now they're up over a million, a million dollars. Okay, now their total contributions went up as well, but look at all that money and interest that they get. Now they'll have to pay taxes on that, obviously. Okay, but that would be their savings. That's a lot of savings. Okay. So then I do ask another question for you just to play around with this calculator and see if you can find a combination that will earn them exactly a million dollars or exactly two million. So that's just kind of fun to play around with the numbers. Like right now, the way we have it set, it's close to a million, um, but it's $22,000 over that. So what if we went down? What if we said, oh, they only have to contribute $240 a month? Wow, that drops them. Just $10 a month for 40 years drops them down below a million dollars. That's crazy how those numbers can, such a small little number in a monthly contribution can affect the big overall number. So what if it was $245 a month? Oh, that puts them over a million, okay? It's 6,000 more. What if we went down a little bit more? What if we did $243? Oh, there we go. That's pretty close. Uh, maybe we could even add in some pennies. What about 50 cents? Wow, it's $1,000 over. Okay, maybe we don't even need 50 cents. Maybe we need like 10 cents. Okay, so you can play around with this and you can kind of see if you can figure out an exact amount. Um, maybe that's just the math nerd in me that kind of likes to play around with that stuff. Um, and then you can see, well, what would happen if um, maybe they change their starting amount? Maybe they want to put in um, $25,000. Maybe somebody helps them out and gives them a little extra money, okay? Um, or you could change the years, you could change the rate, you could change how much they're investing. Maybe they're investing $2,500 each year, okay? But again, we don't want to go over something that's realistic for them. Okay, so you can play around with it and you can see if there's a combination that will earn them $2 million. But again, we know that might not be realistic for them because of their, of their jobs and the amount of money that they're making right now. But maybe in the future they could do more, okay? And then also on that website, if you scroll down, you can look at this graph and you can just kind of see it doesn't take very long. You know, after 10 years, yeah, you can start to see your money growing. After 20 years, you really start to see a difference between these lines, okay? This is their starting amount, this is their total contributions, and then this is all of their interest. So you really start to see your amount grow after about 20 years, okay? So at age 45, they would be in a good position then where they would be on that upward trend. So that's just kind of cool to see that point of the graph.
So when you finish all of those little activities on those three different websites, just write a few sentences for me about what you think, what you learned from this project. Like, were you surprised that it might just take a little bit of money to invest to end up having a lot of money later? Or, or maybe you played around with the ages and you think, oh gosh, I need to really invest when I'm young. I can't wait until I'm too old because then I won't have enough money for when I do retire, okay? So just write three reflections for me, three sentences, at least three sentences. You can write more. Um, and just, you know, kind of tell me what you think. Tell me what your takeaways were. Was it good? Was it bad? Did something surprise you? Um, do you wish something had been different? Okay, you can tell me whatever you would like. And then when you're all done, we'll have to take pictures of your answers. So if you wrote it on this worksheet or a separate sheet of paper, or um, if you typed it, you could make it a Word document, you could make it a PDF, and then you could upload it onto Canvas. So you can take pictures of your work, or you can just upload the file, and then this will be worth 20 points. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know.